Dan for Gaming Day on Cars. Now today we're talking about the long-awaited successor to the McLaren F1. It was just released the other day. It is called the McLaren Speedtail. It has over a thousand horsepower and we're going to talk about 10 awesome features of this car. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about this car is the most polarizing thing about this car. It is the design. Now, this car is visually striking. Uh, Mr. JWW, who's a YouTuber that I follow, has an absolutely fantastic review of this car. Uh, Shmi had another one that was really good, but he said it looks like unlike any other car he's ever seen because of the length of it. Now, this car is supposed to be McLaren's Hyper GT, meaning it's a Grand Tour. It's not like a track-focused car like the Senna was. Now, speaking of design, McLaren has done probably the two most polarizing designs in the last couple of years with the Senna. Whenever that came out, everybody thought it was ugly. They were like, oh, I hate this. But once people started to see it in person, they thought it was uh, made a lot more sense and looked better than what they thought. I mean, the pictures do not do it justice. Uh, when I first saw a picture of the Speed Tail, I think it was Thursday night, I was like, eh, you know, I was like, what, what is this cover over the front wheel? Um, it just looks so freaking long. Um, but after seeing it in video, I think it is absolutely stunning. And I don't think there's any car that's ever been designed that looks anything like it. Now, this car is 202 inches long. Now, just imagine a low slung supercar like car that is the size of a Chevy Suburban. I mean, it is like a foot and a half longer than my Mazda 6, which is insane, but just being so low. But I love the design. The front end has a typical McLaren look. Um, you've got the sort of lights that go around the outside. You've got the air scoops that go down in the hood and below in the front bumper. But I think it is absolutely gorgeous. You've got the doors that go up, which there's actually a button that makes them go up for a special reason that I will get into later. But I think it is visually beautiful. I mean, just the back end of it just looks so, uh, you know, elongated and gorgeous, but it is made from carbon fiber, 100% carbon fiber, and I think the design is perfect, okay? So that is number one. Okay, number two feature of this car that is insane is that it has flexible carbon fiber wings in the back side, okay? It doesn't have a wing that retracts or goes up and down or like a big huge wing like the Senna. Now, the whole body of this car is made of carbon fiber and I don't know if, if you know, carbon fiber has been, you know, the, the best material that uh, supercar or hypercar companies use, but it is more flexible than people know. I mean, the whole rear clamshell and the whole body of this car is made from carbon fiber, but there's two little wings that flap up and it is still one solid piece of carbon fiber. Um, you know, they think of like uh, golf clubs, like driver shafts, are completely made of carbon fiber and they just flex a little bit. And, you know, components of F1 cars are made of carbon fiber that flex, you know, with the speed. And But it looks weird because it, it, there's not like a body line where it goes. It's just these little flaps just open up. Now, this that is made to have downforce in the rear of the car. Now, the Senna, for example, is the ultimate track car that is all about downforce. It's keeping the car planted on the road when you're driving, but this car is all about a low drag of coefficient. It wants to slip through the air as as slippery as possible. And there's a dog yelling at me. There goes Quinn. But yeah, this, this car wants to slip through the air as slippery as possible to get the ultimate top speed. Now, this car is said to go 250 miles an hour, which is uh, more than the McLaren F1 uh, went in the 90s, it was 242. So this is the ultimate GT for McLaren. I think these flexible carbon fiber wings are an awesome detail of this car. So that's number two. Okay, number three about this car is the engine performance. Now, the only thing McLaren has said so far is it's gonna be a hybrid. So I don't know if it's gonna be a twin turbo V8 or a naturally aspirated V12 like the F1 was. I think that would be cool if it was a naturally aspirated V12. But it is supposed to have 1,035 horsepower. The top speed, like I said before, is going to be over 250 miles an hour. I wonder if in a few years that they might come out with like a sort of LT. I know that LT stands for long tail, and this car is already called speed tail. But I wonder if they will develop a car for this, uh, develop a model of this car that's going to go for the fastest uh, speed in the world. Now, the Koenigsegg Gear RS has the record at 277.9. I wonder if this car down the road a couple years from now will go for that record, which would be absolutely insane. So we don't know much about it other than it's just going to have a thousand, over a thousand horsepower. Um, the weight is insane. The weight of this car is 1,430 kilograms, which is 3,150 pounds. This car that is as long as a Chevy Tahoe a foot and a half longer than my car weighs less than my car, Mazda 6, just for comparison. 3,000 pounds and over 1,000 horsepower. That is just 
insane. So the, the performance of this car is going to be ridiculous. Now, the, the craziest thing I heard about this car is that it's going to go from 0 to 186 miles an hour in 12.8 seconds, okay? And in comparison to the McLaren P1, that car did it 4 seconds slower. So this car with over 1,000 horsepower, the P1 had uh, 903, will go to 186 miles an hour from a stop four seconds faster than a McLaren P1. I mean, that is just that is just insane. So you know that this car is going to have ridiculous performance. So that is number three. Okay, number four, which I think, honestly, this is the coolest part of the entire car in that it is the successor to the McLaren F1. Not, not officially, but if this car has a center seating position, no other car except for the F1 from the 90s has this. Now, you are sitting in the middle of the car, um, you've got two seats behind you to the left and the right. Those seats are actually built into the carbon fiber tub of the car. You can't move them. You just slide into those and it looks kind of tight, but you are sitting in the middle. You've got two screens to the left and right of you and up in the far corners are the cameras for the door mirrors, which I'll go into before, but it is 100% driver focused in that you're in the center of the car and you can see everything uh, above you. Above there is the buttons for the P, R, N, and D to make the car go, but this is by far, I think, the coolest part of this car is the central driving position because no other car on the planet other than the cousin to this car has had it, the F1, but that is by far the coolest part, and that is number four. Okay, number five cool feature of the McLaren Speedtail is that this car does not have conventional uh, mirrors. I mean, you can, you can look on the door and see there's a little piece that pops out. That is actually a camera, and the camera... Uh, shows on the inside of the car and the two outward screens what is going on behind you so uh, this car actually has a feature called velocity mode when you're going to go that top speed of 250 the cameras will push in and it just makes it more slippery for the air to go by but this is such a cool feature that you know you, you almost think that uh, door mirrors are a thing of the past you know eventually will be in a couple years but they slide out from the door ever so softly it's just a cool feature and the velocity mode is what the features call when they pop in so that is number five cool feature of the speed tail all right the number six feature that is cool about this car is that it is not exactly street legal in the united states for a couple reasons now the first reason is because of the central seating position and you have the seats to the left of you it doesn't allow any room for some side mounted airbags in the doors so that's number one and number two is the reason that it has the uh, door mounted mirrors as opposed to normal mirrors which is not exactly legal in the US now I'm gonna read something off a website right here about the third reason um, it says uh, a publication said that about a third of the cars were sold to US buyers now there's gonna be 106 of these made and they're already sold out and about 35 of them are gonna be sent to the US but it says, so about 35 are bought by Americans who can bring their cars here under the show or display law, which exempts certain cars from the safety standards if they are deemed to be historically or technologically significant, which this car is, both of those, historically and technologically significant. It's probably one of the most advanced cars ever made. They wouldn't have to wait the 25 years before importing. Now, if you bring it over to the United States and you drive your car for less than 2,500 2, miles in a 12-month period, you are sort of allowed to bring this over under the show or display uh, clause. Now, somebody who buys this car in America is already going to be a very wealthy person and they're not going to drive this thing more than 2,500 miles in a year because this car is like $2.2 .2 million. I guarantee you in about 10 years, this car is going to be worth about $10 million. I mean, you cannot get a McLaren F1 from the 90s for less than $10, $15 million. So this is sort of a loophole that is something dealing with this car that it's not exactly street legal yet but you're still going to be able to bring them over here so that is number six all right the number seven feature that is cool about the speed tail is it doesn't have any sun visors you know every car that's ever been made since the beginning of time has the two little you know pieces of plastic and fabric that fold down so you don't get the sun in your eyes now this car does not have that at all because it has a monochromatic strip on the top of the windshield that at the press of a button, you can make it a little more dark, you know, opaque as opposed to transparent with the touch of a button. Now there's a strip on the top of the windshield that has this way, and there's a little window um, above your head as you're sitting in the middle, plus there's two, the glass of the doors, you know, the doors are mounted to the roof. At the touch of a button, you can change the opacity of, these, of this glass, meaning it can be let in a little bit of light, a little more light, depending on, you know, if it's sunny or blazing sun or in the winter or raining or something but that is a nice feature I wish 
more cars would do this in the future because sun visors are annoying and it'd be cool to have a little strip there at the touch of a button you can change it to essentially like tinted glass so that is number seven that is a pretty cool feature all right number eight feature about this car is the top speed now like i said before in the video the, the mclaren f1 which is sort of the cousin to this car won't say successor that car went 242 miles an hour as a top speed which was absolutely blew everything out of the water for the mid 90s so this car's top speed is supposed to be 250 miles an hour but like i said before i wonder if in a couple years they'll come out with a car that is going to go for that absolute record i know hennessy and koenigsegg and bugatti are all trying to go 300 miles an hour but it's going to be you know virtually impossible till we get better uh, technology for tires but this car is going to be 250 but i bet you in a couple years they're going to go for that record i mean I, I don't know if mclaren is all about records so maybe they won't either way this car is going to go 250 miles an hour which is not too bad so that is number eight all right number nine feature of this car that is cool is all the materials that they use now the whole car is made out of carbon fiber but they've actually found a way to make carbon fiber lighter than it normally is. Normally in a Pagani or a Bugatti they use what's called 3K carbon fiber, meaning there's 3,000 strands in one yarn. I mean carbon fiber is a woven uh, piece of fabric that is then hardened, which is ultra uh, stiff. McLaren has found a way to make what's called 1K carbon fiber, meaning there are 1,000 strands per uh, fabric. Now, have you guys ever seen uh, when they made the Alexis LFA, there was an absolutely amazing loom that was created just to make the pieces of the LFA. I can't imagine the machine that they used to make this car. Now, normal carbon fiber is 3,000 strands per fabric, and this is 1K, so it's a lot thinner, and it allows them to make some incredible designs. You can actually write your name or a face or something, they said. I'll show the picture you can actually draw things within your carbon fiber because the strands are so small that you can sort of make designs which is absolutely insane on the sill of this car it says mclaren it is lit up they found a way to put backlighting and your sill of your mclaren speedtail can say mclaren now they said that also in the interior up where the the buttons are they found a way to make like a thousand strands on top of each other of carbon fiber that makes it almost look like a like a waterfall effect or just the technology that they've done with carbon fiber is absolutely insane so uh, along with the 1k carbon fiber that is even lighter than normal carbon fiber so it's just another way to add to the lightness of this car um, so the materials the whole car is carbon fiber the little wings I said before are carbon fiber just a solid sheet there are no panel gaps in the back of the car. It is just 100% carbon fiber. Now, the front wheel cover is carbon. Everything is carbon. The engine. Now, on the back of the car, where the third brake blade is, which is up and down, they found a way to weave titanium into the carbon fiber, too. So it goes like a, like a color gradation from light all the way to dark up at the top of the car. I mean, it's just insane. Just the details and the circles, I think they call them, I forget what they call like the aeration of the circles to allow for the engine to breathe in the back is just insane. So the materials of this car are top notch. Also, the leather on the inside of the seats. Now, when you, it's going to be hard to get into the car because it's a center seating position. So where you're dragging your butt across the, the left seat to get into the center seat, that's a more durable leather. And once you get into the seat, it's softer leather to hold you into the car. They said it creates like a patina effect. So they're making different kinds of leather and carbon fiber to make this car so special. So that is number nine. All right, the 10th and final feature of the McLaren Speedtail is the front wheel cover. Now, I think this thing is designed to uh, benefit the aerodynamics. Now, you've got the air coming down the car, and instead of sort of turbulent air getting caught up in the wheels, this uh, lets the air fall straight through the wheel and down into the intakes just to make the car even more slippery. I think this is probably the one of the most controversial designs. I mean, every render I've seen that people do on Instagram, they take that away. They just have the normal wheel that matches the back wheel. Now, the front wheel is 20 inches. The back wheel is 21 inches, so absolutely huge. So it's fully made of carbon fiber. It looks really good. I, I don't know if it was me. If it was me and I had the money to buy this car, I'd probably leave the, the, the wheel cover on. I think it looks kind of cool. So that's it. That is 10 cool features of the McLaren Speedtail. And I've seen people online saying, uh, asking if they would rather have this car or a Tesla Roadster. I mean, that is insane. Why would you ever pick that car, which is like a one-trick pony? I mean, it's fast. It goes 0 to 60 so fast. This car is going to be $10, $20, 30000000 million down the road. A Tesla is going to be 100000 bucks, and you're going to be able to find them everywhere. 
Now they're only making 106 speed tails. That was the number that they made for the McLaren F1. So exclusive, beautiful, uh, it totally bespoke design, performance, 250 miles an hour. Why would you ever pick a Tesla? So this is 10 cool features I wanted to share with you guys. What do you guys think about the design of this thing? Let me know below what you think. I personally love it. I don't think any other car company is doing the things that McLaren are doing. It makes every other car basically look not not good. Not good. I think they killed it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.